kembo na tata zambi ya mazulu kingfumu kwa kuisa kembo kembo na tata zambi ya mazulu kingfumu kwa kuisa hey nusiemi everyone how are you all doing my name is ikk and today i'm going to be talking about how to identify the most potent healing foods just a reminder that our videos are for information purposes only and um what we will be giving you here is just guidelines because each person's journey will be different so be patient and pay attention to your body and find out what works for you so you can tailor this information to suit your own personal circumstances and also i'll be making references to um dr sebi quite a lot but he's a natural healer he's quite a legend uh in the world of of natural healing and i find his approach to be one of the most pure uh approaches to healing using food and herbs So I'm going to be using his uh, teachings and his methods as a baseline for a lot of what we do. The aim here is to give us a standard to work towards. You know, we might not always be able to reach that standard because it's it's not easy for everyone, but it's something to work towards and it is quite achievable. I mean, it's not like it's not impossible. It just requires many cases, you know, a change of the way in that we think and you know how we think of because we've learned a lot of things. that we need, we're going to need to learn it includes how we eat includes how we view you know food and how it's connected to our spirituality okay okay so we'll start with um our first slide which is saying really that well-being should be the rule and not the exception now the human body itself is alkaline and in order to maintain that we need to eat foods that help the body to maintain its alkalinity for the best state of health now foods that are found in nature you know growing in the wild just growing naturally they are alkaline that's how the most high make them they can re- usually they can reproduce themselves without man's intervention You know those kind of plants they have a specific cellular makeup or you know a specific molecular arrangement all put in place by the most high and that that cellular makeup of those plants is in harmony with our cellular and molecular makeup so this is why such foods are usually very healing to the human body it does not cause any upset in the chemical balance when we eat them it actually improves our chemical balance it may helps to maintain it so in this way the body is in a state of consistent healing regeneration and repair so when we look at it from this point of view we can see how sickness or disease becomes the exception rather than the rule you only see sickness and disease when you you move away from what has been provided for us in nature by the most high so the rule should be a state of well-being and good health and exception and the exception should be you know a, a state of disease you know that is what was intended when these plants were created in their original state but you know obviously we know we're li- living in babylonian times a lot of things have been turned upside down and we'll see you know we'll talk more about how you know this has affected how we the way we've eaten the kind of foods that are available to us you know the truth is that if we ate the food just as the most high created it we would experience a lot of positive change not a, not only on a, a spiritual level but also on a physical level our outlook becomes different even our capacity to love becomes keener stronger easier disease becomes just like something that is like a rarity if it even happens at all um it becomes the the exception rather than the rule you know your mind your utterances 
you know, they are less carnal and they're more in obedience to and are attuned to the spirit of the Most High. The Most High has our blueprint. He has the blueprint of the plants he's put out there. He knows what we need to thrive and he put it out there. So when we are in compliance in this way, you know, we find that even your thoughts become kinder, the purer. They're just more spiritual all around. And you know, when you and once you experience this kind of thing, you, you don't forget. You don't you don't want to go back to feeling like crap. So I mean, sometimes people do this for a while, and then they end up, you know, falling off the wagon, and then they go back to how they were doing things before. But they they notice a difference. That is the state of mind we're supposed to be in. It's a it's a state of beauty. It's a state of peace and calm. And that's what we're going to be working towards on this channel. You know, to get people back, you know, into that state of cleansing of mind, body, and soul. A good example of uh, you know why you know food that you eat is important. A good example is pork. Why avoid pork? Well, the, in the Old Testament, it, you know, we are expressly forbidden, you know, to eat the, the pig. You can see that in Leviticus um, 11, around chapter, chapter 11, around verse 7 and 8. You know, even in the Bible also, in Mark 5, I think that was where, where um, Isaiah, you know, came across a demon-possessed man, and the demons in the man, when they saw Isaiah, they begged him to cast them into the swine that were standing nearby. You know, you notice they, they asked to go into the swine because swine, they are unclean animals. They are attractive to, to bad spirits. So when you eat swine, you, you become spiritually unsound and um, would attract unclean entities into your body. So there's a reason why we're asked not to eat some of those things and it's just better, they're best avoided. Okay. All right. So now we'll talk about hybrids and non-hybrid plants. What is a non-hybrid? We'll start with a non-hybrid first. What's a non-hybrid plant? Now a non-hybrid would usually refer to plants as they exist in nature. That means it has not been combined with any other plant in an unnatural way or it has not been altered in any way by human intervention so just the way it was created the way the most high intended from the beginning that plant is still in in its you know it's in its original form that's a non-hybrid on the other hand we have hybrid plants and there are two types in this way there are two types of hybrid plants they are natural hybrids and they are unnatural hybrids now, the natural hybrids, this is when you a plant is created from two plants, two separate plants that have chemical affinity. And what does that mean? It means that if you, those two plants, if, you, if, if they found each other in nature, maybe they just happen to grow next to each other in nature, they, they, have, uh, they would naturally gravitate towards each other and they would pollinate each other to form a new variation. So natural hybrids are good because in nature they would they would pollinate each other without any any, um, any intervention. For example, you have a, an orange uh, orange fruit that grows in Ghana, and then you have a different species of orange that grows in Cameroon. Okay, and then you you happen to just have those in your garden, you know, you plant them next to each other, you know, because they are both oranges, but just they have a maybe they have a slight variation in. Uh, in, in, in the way they look, but they're oranges. And in, you, you didn't do anything, but you notice that when you take the seed of one of them and plant it and you grow another tree, that tree now has the attribute of both of them. So you, you, even though you didn't do anything, in nature they, they, were, they gravitated towards each other and they created a, uh, created a variation of themselves. That's an example of a natural uh, hybrid. Okay, so similarly, man can make natural hybrids. If a person wants to um, create a natural hybrid, they can do the same thing. Find a plant with that, and find it's another plant that has a chemical affinity with it, or that is it's that uh, you know they're they are similar in their molecular makeup, and create a hybrid out of them. That's that that would be a, a good hybrid. 
because it, it's uh, complying with the laws of nature. So when man follows these rules um, similar to nature in creating hybrids, he, he then produces hybrids that should not have a side effect in, in the human body. So now we'll move on to um, unnatural hybrids. Now, unnatural hybrids are made from forcing two plant species that would never ordinarily mate or pollinate each other in, in nature. So they, essentially they are forced together to create a new plant. And accordingly, the molecular makeup of this plant is unnatural and has now lost the, the chemical affinity with our own cellular makeup as the Most High intended when he created the original plants. An example is carrot, which was made from two, two plants, the wild yam and the queen ants lace, two very unrelated plants. Now, how do they force these plants to come together? They use a binder, a binder called uh, is it carbonic acid or starch. Starch is used to, as a binder to force the plant to, to stick together and the result is, is an unnatural product. You know, many, an example is uh, like wheat, rice, broccoli, or a carrot, cassava, sugar cane. These are, these are artificial plants. Um, grapefruit, uh, grapefruit as well, which used to be one of my favorite, but you know, now I, you know, I don't really eat it anymore. Um, and all these foods, you know, they, they taste great. They look good. You know, all these, um, they look like the real thing, but they're not in harmony with your body. Unnatural hybrids, the thing that's wrong with them is that the molecular structure is incomplete because they are artificial and so they lack the healing properties of that the non-hybrids or the natural hybrids. Uh, what happened to divert us away from this path of eating right and eating foods in their natural state? According to Sebi, he says the healer was educated. The healer cannot be educated except from one source, the spirit of Yah, the spirit of God. Now, I must mention here, one of the advantages of moving to Africa is that uh, a lot of the food in many areas is organic just by default because um, a lot of small farmers produce food. So a lot of the food is still very organic. And um, so you, it'd be, in many cases, it'll be easy to find good quality organic food to buy and eat in the market. So now we're gonna talk about how to identify unnatural hybrids. One way to identify uh, an unnatural hybrid is seedless fruit, like seedless grapes, or you see um, seedless oranges. See Genesis 1, 29. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. So, because each time it mentions seed, a good indication that the plant might not have been tampered with, because unfortunately some unnatural hybrids have seeds. Also, um, another way to identify it is um, the presence of starch. Starch is not found in plants that occur in nature. If there's a presence of starch in any food, that is an indication that it's an unnatural hybrid that has been forced together using, you know, it starch as a binder. The parent plants, the, uh, the starch is used to, to make sure that, that they stay together. And, you know, when you, when you look at it from a more intuitive or spiritual point of view, that, that union, that combination doesn't sound like something that would promote healing. In your body on any level. I mean, anything forced like that automatically carry an air energy of chaos, dissension. When you force something like that, to, and then you, you want to, you think it should make your body feel better. It, the union was not a happy one. It's not a happy union if you have to force them together. But the side effects, you know, in the long run, it's not worth it. It's just going to make you sick. Another way to identify unnatural hybrids is through where they grow or where they thrive 
you know normally they are cultivated by humans you know they need inter they need human intervention to grow and propagate you know on the other hand non hybrids are quite the opposite you know they those are usually found growing in the wild or you know they can survive in the wild you know the seeds are propagated through different means you know they they're really tough plants normally you know they endure the seasons the weather the cold the heat the dry season you know they are much tougher plants and as a result they are much more healing and non hybrids can be cultivated too you know in the garden it just so happens that the wild varieties are much tougher plants you know stronger oh you know one other way of of identifying an unnatural hybrid then to be sure is to do a lab analysis that's usually is the the, the way to, to tell without a doubt whether a plant is was created naturally or unnaturally. This is what Dr. Sebi used to identify many popular plants and food. He identified that they were artificial. You know, the, the, the popular aloe vera that you see, you know, around. And it, that one is an artificial plant. What they do is that when they make these plants, they make them in a way that they have high yield and it grows quickly and everything. They didn't create it because they wanted to heal you. They didn't create it because they wanted you to have a better product. They created it so that they can make them more money. When the most high made food, when he made the plants, he made a lot of them seasonal. And there's a reason for that. Seasonal. I'll give you a good example of how you can even identify animals that are not natural. Chickens. Chickens produce all year round. Nowhere in the wild are you going to see a bird or even ducks, ducks that we have. We have ducks that, you know, people keep in their homes or even domestic ducks, uh, you know, or ducks in the wild, any, any fowls in the wild. They reproduce seasonally. Not, but chickens, they don't even need to have the meal. The funeral just keep laying. And they were bred specifically for that. That's an unnatural animal. You know, just an example of, why there's so much, so many health problems. A lot of what people are eating, the chickens they eat artificially created. You know, they don't that that molecular makeup does not will never comply with, with what the most high has put here on earth. Us, you know. Anyway, so that's just another example of uh on a unnatural, unnatural hybrid, uh, hybrid which is in the case of an animal anyway. All right. So um Right. So that's how to identify um, the unnatural hybrids. Now next we'll talk about what happens when you eat unnatural hybrids. Well, you know, these, so foods like that, they're on the acid side, you know, and they promote the formation of mucus in the body. You know, they, 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 it, it results in the, the, in the damaging of the mucous membrane in the body. These types of plants, they, do, don't, they don't supply the body with proper nutrients. That's why you can have people who are eating healthy. You see, you see their plates, they have vegetables, they have you know, everything, it looks good. I mean, they're healthy and whatever, they're doing all this exercise and whatever. And then you, and then they, they, they come down with, with, with heart problems, with kidney problems, back problems, headaches, pancreatic problems. You know, I know someone who was a vegan and uh, she, was, she started having heart problems. It's like, how can you be a vegan and have heart problems? You know, it, it happens, but it's not supposed to be like that. And, and it, 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 and it stem, those things stem from the food. A lot, of this, a lot of vegans, for example, they go after these fake meats. Those things are beyond artificial. If you look at how it's made, you, maybe you can even start to compare it to pla you know, plastic. In my mind, the amount of processing that go, I mean, they use soy to make plastics anyway. You know, so um, I don't know. I, you know, people just need to know, but they don't. A lot of people are kept in the dark for a particular reason, uh, just so that they can give them anything they like and they don't know any better and they think they are doing something good for their bodies by ingesting these unnatural products when in fact it's just slowly killing them, you know, it's slowly doing damage to their body or, you know, it, it's, it's slowly either killing them or doing some damage to their body or just, you know, not leaving the body in a, in a terrible state. 
anyway so um so the, that's the problem with this i mean uh things like corn sugar you know starchy foods do they stimulate the body rather, rather than nourish it you know the body the human body is electrical and so when you have plants with that has a complete molecular structure like the natural hybrids and the non-hybrids these are electrical just like the human body so when you eat those consistently you feel the difference your mind is different your energy is different you, you have electrical affinity with the plant with the food you are eating it, it just you you you, are, you have energy you f you feel cleaner you are cleaner you know and you will know it you will know the difference okay now what is the the importance of knowing the distinction you know between this kind of foods now if you're in good health you know that's all good you know keep doing what you're doing you know just keep you know i would say always listen to your body you know you, you sometimes people have a, a nagging headache what do they do they take a painkiller it goes away it comes back next month it comes back again some blood but you know each time they just keep ah oh, it's just a headache it's just stress from work but no your body is trying to tell you something there's a blockage somewhere something is not right so you it, that, that is that usually that's a signal for you to do and to have an oil change that is usually a time your body is telling you i need i need cleansing it's time for an oil change but a lot of people don't know that they just keep going and they keep adding more they keep eating food eating more and more and more so knowing the difference between these foods in this way is important to getting healed through your food that way you can look at a meal and you can tell exactly what it's going to do in your body so even when somebody puts a healthy i put a healthy in quotes meal in front of you you can tell you can look at each item and say this one you know this is artificial this is real this is you know this is non-hybrid this is this will this has what I, you know it has this it has that you know you you can tell what exactly what it's going to do whether it's going to be damaging whether it's going to be helpful whether it's going to be neutral or you know there's some things like that so it's really important for those in who are in the art of healing to take note of the difference between uh, you know, hybrid and non-hybrid foods. I, I met a medical doctor recently who, he, he used to be in a medical profession, but he, um, he, he switched and went into uh, more natural methods of uh, healing, kind of like a natural path. And uh, he, he has a therapy that helps cancer patients. He's, he's been helping a lot of people and getting them back to good health. We sometimes even stay four, which helps reverse them and, you know, great. And then he made a comment once and said but that not everything can be healed. Uh, so I asked him, I said, like what? And he said, like, for, for example, multiple sclerosis, those are central nervous issues, problems. You, you can't heal those. That's, that's permanent. And I told him, no, that's not true. Dr. Sebi has, 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 uh, has helped people. He has healed people of that. Morse has healed people of that. You have you just have to know how. They use herbs. They use fruit. You know, and he was like, what, really? And then when he told me about the kind of food he was giving his patients, then I understood why. So it's the content of the food. And he doesn't know the, he doesn't know the distinction between hybrid and non-hybrid. He would just think a carrot is a carrot, uh, a, a broccoli is broccoli, and he would pack those on a plate and give your, your cancer patient. It, it will help the cancer, cancer patient. You know, that's one way of, you know, healing them. But he cannot help the multiple sclerosis because... Something is missing from this protocol. So I, I turned him on to these natural healers and I told him, you know, study what these people are doing and maybe you can help uh, some of your patients even further away and, uh, you know, take out a few things from the, uh, what you feed them, add a few things, learn herbs, do something different with your practice and save more lives, you know? So I, I hope he goes into that. And I look at people like Dr. Sebi who have cured, I mean, gangrene. If you went to your doctor, they would tell you that, no, they cannot help you, that the only thing they can do for you is to cut that leg off. Somebody brought to Dr. Morse a, a patient with gangrene. If I, the doctor told him if he doesn't take that leg off, he will die. Dr. Morse re re reversed the gangrene. The first thing he did is to stop his food. The food he was eating was helping his body to rot. Basically, it was preventing his body 
from healing itself. He was eating foods that was actually killing him slowly. So once Dr. Moss changed his, uh, his, his diet and put him on herbs, put him on fruits, the body started immediately started repairing itself. The body is a self-healing machine. Never forget that. And when you know what it is, all you have to do is don't stop blocking it. Stop tying its hands. You know, like when you say tying its hands, like you're restricting it with things you put in your mouth. Watch what you put in your mouth. Give it enough liquid. Give it enough raw foods. You know, the when I say you cannot eat cooked food, you can. But not, not what kind of foods they are. Are these unnatural hybrids that are just causing inflammation and mucus to accumulate in your body? You know, so those things are, are important to, um, to keep in mind. So I'm going to um, stop here for now. Um, I will continue the rest of the slides in uh, another video, a part two. Thank you so much for listening. And I uh, hope you have an awesome day and salakiambote. Kembo kembo na tatunzambi yamazulu king from Ukwakwiza. Kembo kembo na tatawamulu elimo. Kembo kembo na tata wamu elimo. Kembo kembo na tata zambi ya mazulu kingfu mkwa kuisa. Kembo kembo na tata zambi ya mazulu.